don't design your logo in Canva without first watching this video. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kristen and I share branding, graphic design, and Canva tips, tricks, and productivity hacks for personal brands and online entrepreneurs who don't have tons of time to waste trying to figure out Canva. Pep talk. First of all, I'm super proud of you for actually wanting to design your own logo, whether you're starting a business, creating a product or a course, or even making your favorite hobby something real, something that can actually generate an income for you and your family. Kudos to you for taking control of your future. My designer friends would probably kill me for saying this, but I want you to know that you do not have to hire an expensive designer to create your logo or a cheap one, because $5 Fiverr logos are not gonna cut it. Here's the thing that most people don't understand about designing for your own business. Being able to design simple marketing graphics for your business puts you in total control, and nobody knows your business quite like you. When you can create anything on a whim, bringing all of those big ideas that you have in your head to life is possible. Understanding the basic ins and outs of graphic design is a skill that you can use for the entire life of your business. And let's not forget to mention that it is a heck of a lot cheaper. I'd guess that if you're just getting started in your business, you likely don't have an extra couple thousand dollars laying around just waiting for you to hire a design. Once you create a logo that you're proud of, all of a sudden your business idea becomes real. Real. Your logo is usually the first graphic that you are going to need and want for your new business, but you need to make a really good first impression because in the online space, looks matter. You want your audience to be able to trust you and your products or services, and one of your biggest goals needs to be having a very professional looking online presence. And it all starts with your logo. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you all of the most important things that you are going to need to know if you're gonna put your designer hat on take the plunge and create your logo in Canva. My hope is that you feel confident and completely inspired to hop into Canva and start creating your logo. I believe in you and you have got this. Stick with me until the end because I'm going to be sharing a special link with you to over 30 pre-designed Canva logo trio templates so you don't have to start from scratch. Whew. Before we jump in, it's important to know a few things about using Canva legally for your business. And I am not any kind of attorney, so this should not be taken as legal advice. But here's what I know to be true. If you create a logo in Canva, you cannot trademark that logo, which usually isn't too big of a deal because if you're just starting out, you're probably not looking into trademarking your logo, but this is just something important to keep in mind down the road. Now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into it, shall we? Designing your logo is going to be a heck of a lot easier if you do a little pre-work beforehand, specifically getting clear on your brand's personality and the vibe and tone that you want to convey. If you already have decided on brand fonts, that's cool, but do know that you don't have to use your brand fonts in your logo. If you're like, oh my gosh, Kristen, brand fonts, I do not have those, stick with me because I'm gonna show you a super fun font trick that's gonna help you decide on fonts for your logo. When it comes to incorporating different colors into your logo, I do recommend that you use colors from your color palette to keep everything consistent. But if you don't have a color palette, it's totally safe to design in black and white and then figure out your color Colors later. Let's quickly talk about the different types of logos that you could potentially create for your business. The first logo that I'm going to show you is just a simple word mark. These are very easy to create as long as you find the perfect font for your business name. You can play around with the colors of different words within your word mark logo, but pretty much this is the simplest and quickest logo that you could create. One step up from a word mark logo is a styled word mark logo. A styled word mark logo incorporates text with some stylistic nuances that can help differentiate you and your brand. You may incorporate simple shapes or line elements. You might layer text or try incorporating some curved text to create a unique look. You can create a word and symbol mark logo. A word and symbol mark logo is exactly what it sounds. You have your text, you can use one font or two different fonts, and then you have a simple symbol that you incorporate with your text. If you are going to go this route, my best advice is to keep your symbol super simple. <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> the last style of logo is just a symbol mark. So I don't recommend you use this for your business if you're just getting started. 
A symbol mark is usually reserved for big brands that have a very heavy presence. I'm sure looking at these three symbol logos, you know exactly who the brand is behind them. There are two really big, common, blaring logo design mistakes that I see being made all the time, which result in pretty unusable logos. So let's make sure that you're not gonna make those mistakes. I see this mistake often, so this is rule number one when it comes to logo design. Don't ever incorporate a photo into your logo design. There are so many ways that you are going to be using your logo. So you want to have a lot of freedom when it comes to your logo size. Your logo needs to be visible very, very small, and it also needs to be able to be scaled very, very large. While you might have a beautiful image, incorporating an image into any part of your logo is going to make scalability an issue. Incorporating a photo into your logo will also make your logo very difficult to use across different backgrounds. Say you want to overlay your logo on a photographic background, having a photo in your logo and placing that on top of another photo is just really going to not look right. So stay away from photos and look to create a logo that contains just vector elements and text. Speaking of photos, I had another big no-no for you. You never want to design your logo and incorporate a background into the logo design. The most versatile logos have what is called a transparent background. And that means that you can place your logo on just about any image or pattern or texture and the logo will appear as it does in these two examples on the right. You want your logo to look really, really great on a dark background and equally as great on a light background. When designing anything for your business, including your logo, you'd be flat out silly to skip out on gathering inspiration. When I first started designing, I used to think that every single thing I created needed to be a totally unique, 100% original design. But after years of designing for my own business, I realize that is not the case. I recommend popping onto Pinterest, maybe even creating a secret board to collect some logos that you like. You can hop onto Etsy and search for things like minimalist logo, boho logo, feminine logo. And another website that I usually check out is Creative Market. The goal here is to save anything and everything that inspires you, whether you like the fonts that are used, the general layout of the logo, or maybe the icon that's incorporated, because you never know just what is going to ignite your creative fire. Once you have some logos to use as an inspiration and a general idea of what you might want your logo to look like, it's time to start designing. And lucky for you, I have just a few design tips up my sleeve that are going to be helpful. When you're not a designer, but you're designing your own logo, you must keep it incredibly simple. You don't want to incorporate unnecessary design elements just for the sake of designing. Simple truly is better. A few good rules of thumb for creating simple logos is to combine no more than two fonts, don't use any more than two colors, and be careful when playing around with any of Canva's fun text effects as things can get out of hand really quickly. Before we go any further, if you are thoroughly enjoying all the tips that I'm sharing in this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my branding, graphic design, and Canva videos, including part two of this video where I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you my own creative process for creating a logo in Canva. Hear me out. I know that you are not a graphic designer and you probably feel like you have no eye for design, but just like anything in business, there are some super simple rules that you need to follow when you're designing anything, including your logo. Rule number one, be mindful of the space between your text, the spacing between the letters and any other additional elements that you are including in your logo. Not being mindful of the spacing in your logo can make your logo look very amateur and unprofessional. So make sure you're giving text and elements enough breathing room, but without creating large areas of space. Incorporate visual hierarchy into your logo design. You want to consider the size of your text and elements. You can increase the size of text or elements to create a focus on the most important part of your logo. I always like to tell people when everything is important, Nothing is important. Does your viewer know what to look at first and second in your logo? In this example, you'll notice the logo on the left is not using visual hierarchy very well at all. The words wedding planner 
are taking up more of a focus than the words Sahara Miller. So while the words wedding planner are important so that somebody knows what Sahara Miller does, they don't need to be the focal point of the logo. Shrinking them down and moving them to the right creates a much more visually interesting and easy to read logo. Create a balanced logo. As people, we are naturally drawn to symmetrical images and everything in graphic design has a visual weight, whether it's a color or a shape or a design element. So you want to stay away from having a really dominant element in your logo. If you have an icon on the left side of your logo, you may balance it out with more text on the right side. Balance is going to create stability within your logo, increasing trust from your viewers. As you are designing your logo, consider the size of your text and elements and the placement of your text and elements to ensure that your logo is balanced. Last but not least, when you are creating your logo, be mindful of your typography. Chances are your logo is going to consist of mainly text, so you want to put a focus on making sure that your text is just right. You want to make sure that any font choices that you use in your logo reflect the vibe and tone of your visual brand. I recommend not using more than two fonts in your logo and when you're combining them, make sure that they complement each other, but there is still enough contrast between the two. Oh, let's talk about fonts, shall we? So when you're creating a logo, your fonts are probably the most important thing that you're going to be working with, okay? And I know I hear it all the time, like, I don't know how to pair fonts. I'm not sure what fonts look good together. So I wanna share with you guys a quick little hack that I use to find the perfect font combination. So let me introduce to you one of my all-time favorite websites for design resources, creativemarket.com. If you want to find some font combinations or just get a better handle at what fonts look good together and how to combine them, do yourself a favor and search Font Duo in the search bar on Creative Market. This is a great place to find inspiration for fonts that go well together and seeing different ways you can use them to create your logo. Usually when a designer is selling a font duo, they're going to have a bunch of different examples here in the product page that could give you tons of ideas for using the fonts and combining them together in your logo. While Canva has tons and tons of fonts available and even more if you're a pro user, I do recommend that if you wanna create a unique logo, you invest in some fonts to use. You can even test out the font by typing in some example text down here, copying the image, and simply pasting it into your Canva document. You're not gonna have a ton of editing capabilities while you're testing it out, but this is an insanely helpful way to get a feeling for how certain fonts might work together. I usually dig through Creative Market and go along collecting all kinds of different font styles that I like. Once you have some fonts you've decided on and any other design elements or icon styles that you wanna incorporate into your logo, you are in a really good place. Before you start designing though, I wanna walk you through some of the different logo variations that you might find helpful to have in your back pocket. Your logo is a huge component of your brand and it is going to show up in so many places and in so many different ways. Your main logo or primary logo is your go-to logo variation. This logo you're going to use 90% of the time. It's going to be the main logo on your website and you will most likely use this across brand collateral. Your secondary logo is an alternate version of your main logo, and this logo gives you an additional style to use if and when it's needed. For example, if you have a horizontal logo that will be scaled down to a square shape, that would just be a ginormous waste of space and your logo would end up appearing very small within the square. That's why it's important to have a vertical version of your logo as well. As you can see, the main logo and secondary logo look very much alike, but they are stacked in a way that creates a different shape. And this is going to give you a lot of freedom when you're using your logo across social media graphics and visual content. The third variation of your logo that you are going to need is your icon. Your icon is a watered down, very, very simple version of your logo. And it is often used on social media and you can even use it as a design element on top of graphics and photos. I've even seen them used as a watermark. Here is another example of a logo trio. You can see the main logo is horizontal, incorporates the diamond icon, 
And the secondary logo is a more stacked version. It incorporates the same colors, the same fonts. We have just rearranged some of the text in the logo. We've also placed the diamond icon as a background element in the logo. And lastly, the icon of this logo variation is the simplest version. It's a very simple geometric shape incorporating the brand color and the fonts. If you need to create a logo and you don't want to start from scratch, you're a smart cookie. And if I can let you in on a little secret, I kind of consider myself a lazy designer. I've already mentioned that I rarely start from scratch because I'm a busy mom of three and I simply don't have hours to waste coming up with original ideas all the time. So I give you permission to start with a template. With a good set of templates, it is incredibly likely that you could whip out your logo trios in just a matter of hours. Just make sure that the logos are versatile and they're editable, professional, yet still give you the freedom to make them totally unique to you and your business. So if you wanna hop on the fast track and create a logo that you are proud of super fast, then I'm going to be dropping the link to a set of 30 pre-designed logo trio templates and it even comes with a training video that you can grab and edit to your heart's content. All of these logos were designed by a professionally trained designer, that's me. And it doesn't matter what niche you're in, what your business is about. I'm confident that these logos are going to give you the inspiration and a really great starting point to create your own. And since I love all of my YouTube fans, you can use the code LOGO10 for $10 off logo in a day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can continue learning how to design amazing graphics for your business alongside me. I believe in you, you have got this, and I can't wait to see what you create. Bye!